Welcome to uh, one of the apiary sites for Northumberland Honey Company. Uh, this is a row of our British Standard National Hives uh, that we keep. We are commercial uh, beekeepers um, looking after these bees primarily for honey production um, and mead which is a honey alcohol but a big part of what we do is uh, crop pollination as well. So we're going to have a little look through one of uh, the hives as part of what we do for an inspection routinely. Um, the first thing we want to actually see is that the bees are flying healthily um, and normally bringing in pollen. So if we have a little look down at the entrance of the hive there, you can see little yellow bits coming in on the legs of the bees, which is pollen, which has been harvested by the bees from the trees, mainly around this particular area. When we actually pulled up here this morning, you could hear a quite big distinct hum around the trees that we parked under, which is uh, a sycamore tree. So the bees are really busy today. Um, so the trees that they've got around us, like this very big sycamore tree, is where they're gathering lots of the pollen and nectar. But they will fly three miles to actually get some forage. So we've got Anna, our bee farming apprentice, who's busy working through the hives down there. Um, we'll just go and have a little quick look at what she's doing and then we'll come back and join Susie uh, at one of these first hives. But Susie will just get going um, first. If you have a little walk down here, we've got the hives separated into pairs. It's basically easier for us to work that way and um, it also allows the bees to recognise patterns for where their hives are in a row. We don't leave them in a very, very tightly packed row or anything. They need sort of shapes and patterns if you like to recognize where their hives are as well as what we call the pheromones of the hive and the smell of the hive which helps the bees identify which hive is theirs. So what Anna's doing here is she's actually split the hive down so we've removed the top boxes which is where the honey would be so in these sort of boxes one two three four would all be honey and then we separate off the honey with a queen excluder um, so that the queen is basically just in the bottom box where she's actually laying all of this wonderful brood that Anna's just inspecting. She's got a bee suit on, uh, so she's got a veil which is protecting her from any bees getting onto her face, her eyes stinging. Um, and she's wearing just these nitrile gloves. They're very thin, so they would actually be able to sting through. You can see, even though for all of the bees flying around, there's no bees that are bothering the gloves at all, um, and they're you know quite calm. We have a little bit of a smoker that Anna's holding on to there, but you can see there's not very much smoke at all coming out of there. We don't really need to use much smoke with our bees to actually work with them. They're really quite nice, calm bees. Um, so what Anna's doing here is just checking the health status of the colony, really, that there's enough honey in the, in the brood nest area where the queen is, um, that they're not trying to swarm or anything, which is where they split. We've actually got the queen on this frame as well, so you can have a little look in there. You may well be able to see her. She's got a little green dot on her. She's right in the bottom corner of this frame, as they often are. So that's why we also have to be very careful when we're handling frames so that we don't sort of squat any bees, or most importantly, the queen, whilst she's um, walking around the frame. So the queen really is the engine room of the hive. Each one of these hives has a queen. So there's just one queen per hive. She'll lay 2,000 eggs a day. In the height of the season so we can end up with sort of 80,000 bees in there um, at any one time so you can see actually the hives get quite big all of these hives are you know really packed out full of bees at the moment you can see here Susie examining this colony uh, which is slightly smaller than the one that Anna was just going through um, but again you can see the really nice quite calm bees We're not having to use much smoke just the gloves that we use are these nitrile ones again which are good in that you can actually feel what's going on on the frames it also means that we don't spread any disease around so any sort of viruses um, and brood disorders and diseases that the bees can get we're minimizing any risk of transmission of, of any disease between um, different apiary sites we use the same gloves throughout an apiary site so we're not wasteful of gloves um, but we can actually by changing gloves between sites we can actually avoid any disease transmission so it's called barrier techniques really barrier methods so we um, maintain good levels of hygiene all the way through 
We also, uh, we've got another queen here. We're doing really well today, seeing all the queens. So you can see her, she's another green marked queen. So we marked them different colours for different years. So this queen was born last year. Um, and so the colour for this year is actually blue. So any queens that get born this year will be marked blue. And what Susie's actually checking for here is really the, the health of the brood as well, that it looks nice and um, and flat. You've got the nice sort of digestive biscuit sort of colour brood here. We've got the nice looking larvae in these sort of cells here, which look absolutely fit and healthy. And we've actually got as well next to it, just at the end of the finger here, we've got a bee that's actually starting to hatch out. So this guy there, that girl, should we say, because they are all, all female workers, um, is, is hatching out and all of that digestive biscuit coloured stuff is going to be new bees that are hatching out. Another thing that's really interesting, we talked about the pollen coming in earlier. If you have a look at this frame that's on the top, we've actually got an array of different coloured pollens here. So you can actually see just in this comb just how many different colour pollens there are that the bees are actually foraging on. The, dif the different colours represent different flowers that the bees visit and it's a huge huge array when we actually extract honey we can test where the bees have foraged to get that honey by testing the pollen and often we can see that that is made up of 30 40 or more different types of flowers the bees visited you can see here the queen excluder going on which basically just stops the queen from migrating up in the hive and laying all those eggs and brood in the top supers. The supers is effectively where the honey is made. Super effectively just means uh, above if you like so bees generally tend to store honey above themselves and so that's why we call them the honey supers. So what we've got here is Susie just checking those. We have little spacers here which just help to keep nice space between the frames. Gives the bees effectively space to build the comb out and um, they've also got a little bit of space on either side of those frames at the moment to start putting more in the way of honey. So we'll have a little look in this next box up. We do have what we call a feeder on the top there as well. That's sort of a relic from spring because when there wasn't a honey flow on, we've had to feed them a little bit of uh, invert syrup just to help the brood nest get going. But as soon as the honey flow starts, there's no feed going on there at all. But for space, we just leave the empty feeders on. So we've got a little bit of the uh, honey, you can see just glistening in the combs there. We'll find a better one, as the uh, expert beekeeper says. So you can see that as well. If we look at the uh, reflection in the sun, you can see that glistening honey coming in there. So the bees are, are making good progress. This is probably one of the smaller colonies that we've got. Interestingly with me just stood in front of the hive, what happens with the bees as well is that we get a little bit of banking of the bees, so it's like the airport really, so we'll get a bit of a queue forming with the bees and you can see that at the entrance now where the bees are actually starting to queue up more to get in. You can see all of that lovely pollen on the bees legs, those little yellows and oranges and cream. Another thing that's just starting to flower here is the hawthorn and that's another um, good pollen source and good nectar source that the bees have. Um, again, you can see Anna just working her way down the line. We always work in pairs, just, you know, if any boxes start to get a bit heavy or anything with honey, then we help each other out, um, try and create as nice a working environment as possible as we're going through the bees and uh, make sure we're working together. And if you have any questions, we're hoping to be able to do a bit of a live question and answer session uh, towards the end. Hope you've enjoyed seeing around one of the apiary sites with us and we'll crack on and get the rest of these bees checked.